Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Richmond, Texas. I am Susie A. Bear, the rector here, and we extend a special welcome to all of those who are worshiping with us online. We have a few announcements. Um, one is that on Tuesdays, the last two Tuesdays in July and the first Tuesday in August, our own Kristen Sadler, who is an RN, will be with her husband, the chef, doing three presentations about gluten-free uh, cooking, uh, eating, and she will talk about inflammatory foods and all those aspects of folks who are dealing with issues with gluten. Um, so it's a great opportunity if you have a family member to come. You can share recipes, learn recipes, um, get a better understanding of how to help that family member whether it's a grandchild or a spouse or uh, that, that you want to be able to provide uh, healthy food for. So keep those in mind on Tuesday evenings in late July and early August. But most importantly, in two weeks, we're going to have a wonderful 4th of July celebration. And Melissa's gonna give details about that for us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nice to see you all. Um, in two weeks, um, the 4th of July is actually on a Sunday, so we get to celebrate together. So we're going to have a hot dog lunch after the 10 o'clock service, and then we're going to have patriotic music with uh, Tom and the choir. And, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. The church will provide the watermelon, the hot dogs, the chips. Um, and the waters and I'm asking you next week to sign up to bring the things that go with hot dogs like chili and slaw and potato salad. Somebody mentioned potato salad. Oh, yeah. Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, just anything that would be great for um, a hot dog lunch and um, somebody also recommended desserts. So um, I'll have kind of break it down on a poster and you can just sign up next Sunday and we're gonna have a wonderful celebration. And bring friends. I know that Betty's bringing friends. We're bringing five friends, so uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And it's a sing-along. Yes, sing-along. Yeah. Yeah. Let us worship God.
God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <coughs> The first lesson is a reading from 1 Samuel. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord, who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. 
So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ready and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 9. We will read the psalm responsibly by half verse. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you never forsake those who seek you, O Lord. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood will remember them. He will not forget the cry of the afflicted. Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gate of death. So that I may tell all of your praises and and rejoice in your salvation in the the gates of the city of Zion. The ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug, and the snare they set is their own foot caught. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are trapped in the works of their own hands. The wicked shall be given over to the grave. And also all the peoples that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. And the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Rise up, O Lord. Let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. Put fear upon them, O Lord. Let the ungodly know that they are no more. The second lesson is a reading from 2 Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commanded ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. 
with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Our Old Testament passage is so long uh, that uh, parts of it are optional, but I would like to read to you the paragraph that came before what we read today, that Kathy read for us it's relevant for uh, my sermon this morning. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in this valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with a keeper, took the provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting the war cry. 
Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. A beardless boy has been on my mind this week as I prepared this sermon for Father's Day. I was thinking of David, the youngest son of Jesse, who, when bringing supplies to his older brothers, hears the shouted threats of Goliath, the giant of a soldier, the Philistine's prize fighter, who at the first of the day dares anyone to come against him alone in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But I also today want to talk about fatherhood and God as our father. Everyone. Every child deserves to have a father who is present, providing stability and safety, teaching and playing, loving, supporting, but also teaching how to be responsible and resilient in the face of life's challenges. Every child deserves to have a father who has expectations and yet forgives mistakes, who teaches about consequences of behavior, a father that teaches about appropriate treatment of others. A father who models strength and restraint. I give thanks today for all the men who raise up others and act as fathers, both biological fathers and situational adoptive fathers. You are all so incredibly important and needed in the world. As one father has described his experience of fatherhood, I love everything about being a dad. But if I had to choose, it would be the realization that you can love this deeply. It is quite a revelation to a man and it transform, transfers to other aspects of life. It allows you to see life through new selfless eyes and that love extends outward through a deeply held sense of responsibility. Jesse is a father who has sent his youngest son to carry provisions to his brothers. David is too young to fight, but he is definitely old enough to be sent on errands. David is learning to be helpful as he is able. He is trusted by his father and he is expected to do his part. There is a solid relationship there between Jesse and his sons. David is a son with the father who has raised him to be confident, responsible, and capable within his abilities. Now David arrives just as Goliath is repeating his daily challenge to the Israelites, taunting them. If you have anyone I can fight alone, we can end this now. The Israelites do not. It is clear to all of them that Goliath will easily kill anyone who faces him. Goliath goes on to denigrate the God of Israel, their Lord God, and David hears this. It is what Goliath says about the God of Israel that prompts David to walk up and accept the challenge. Now Goliath is armed in such a way that he is invulnerable at the height of technology for the time. He has helmet and mail, shield and javelin. And David, when he goes out to meet Goliath, with um, you know, whom Saul attempts to cover in armor, says, it's too big, it's too heavy, I can't even walk. So he goes out to meet Goliath with only what David uses when he's out alone protecting the sheep. A staff, a slingshot, and five smooth stones. Here is a beardless boy before Goliath, a monster of a man, shielded, and David, not even with a sword. David takes aim, he whirls that slingshot around and he takes down Goliath, massive, terrifying, thought to be undefeatable Goliath with one stone. Now this is more than a story about little beating big, more than about how much moxie David has. It's more than about how a shepherd fells a professional soldier. It's about how the word of the Lord is enough for a boy to take on the bully of bullies that threatens their entire nation. Also, God our Father who loves us sends Jesus Christ, his Son, to save us. God our Creator is Father to us all and to whom we will return. Now, we learn about fathers 
through their children. Think of Jesus as the Son of God. Jesus is not afraid in this boat in the storm. He has power over the storm. He calms it. And then he is surprised by the fear of the disciples. You see, the disciples have not yet learned that they don't need to be slaves to their fear anymore. Jesus goes on to free them. He frees us from the bondage of sin, of fear. <clears throat> Through Jesus, we become children of the same faithful Father, this same Lord God whom David fights for. One of the most powerful things that my father did for me that has resonated throughout my life was to teach me not to be afraid, to trust in God. He demonstrated this in a variety of ways, from back when he taught all three of us how to swim, teaching me how to stand in front of others and speak, um, trusting me to build fires and to ask me to set up tents with him and by also showing bravery himself. Just after Martin Luther King was shot when I was 10 years old in Memphis, Tennessee, in April of 1968, he walked from St. Mary's Episcopal Cathedral in downtown Memphis to the mayor's office, but he didn't walk alone. He walked with both the white and the black ministerial associations, because back then everything was separate in Memphis. These two ministerial associations went together to ask the mayor to end the garbage worker strike peacefully. Since my dad was tall, he's in the shadows behind Mayor Loeb's desk in the photos that show Rabbi Wax talking to the mayor. To me, at a scary time when I was 10 years old, it seemed to me a very brave thing to do, a morally necessary thing to do and it has shaped me as a Christian. As we grew up in Memphis during that turbulent time, we talked nightly at the dinner table about what was happening at school, in the streets, what was described in the paper or on TV, what was being said at church. As we kids struggled to grasp the hostility and violence that we did not understand, both my father and my mother struggled to explain the history of it to us at dinner. And they consistently emphasized that we looked to Jesus, who was peaceable and loving. And each night, my father or my mother would pray for Jesus to, to change people's hearts. And they would pray for peaceful resolutions as we prayed together to bless the food. We children learn that if people are looking for a target for their anger and fears, it all comes down to being able to pick out people at a distance because they're visibly different. Up close, however, they become human. They are neighbors, friends. Now, we human beings, all of us, we have the sinful capacity to blame others for our misfortunes, to suspect others because of stories we hear or we've grown up with. Who did our parents or our neighbors blame? Who were the targets of hostility on the playgrounds of our childhood? There are plenty of big words for this capacity we have to suspect people we haven't even met. But a strong, confident father does not teach his children hatred or vengeance. He teaches kindness and restraint. And with the way of love bearing them up, children grow up strong enough to face down evil. God sent his son to be among us, teaching us the way of love. This son was killed unfairly, senselessly, but death did not win. Jesus fought death and won so that we, human brothers and sisters, might be set free. Free from the power of death. Free from the power of sin. Over and over again throughout his ministry, Jesus says, do not be afraid. God sent his son so that we might no longer be slaves to sin and fear, no longer slaves to the death that this world can bring in so many ways. This is the gift of being parented by the father of us all. We have been set free. 
we now can have the loving capacity to even suffer and yet forgive, to not be consumed by vengeance, not be overcome by fear. In all our varied backgrounds, cultures, and stories, we share the same Father God. And as we grow as Christians, we are continuing to learn how to see each other as brothers and sisters. How can we, brothers and sisters in the household of God, teach those who are desperate, those who are angry, that we are all children of the same God? How can we learn or change ourselves? How can we change the world? Consider David. David is experienced with protecting his flocks from bears and lions. He happens to have just the right skills and experience to be the only one who can face down this very real threat. He's on the battlefield and he is not a soldier. You know, David had a good father who raised him in Jesse, and David trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. We, we are not fatherless. We are the adopted children of a faithful father who has expectations of us and who also loves and forgives our failures. God has given us such gifts. You might call them weapons of righteousness. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we have these gifts. Peace, love, joy, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. With these gifts, we can be God's family living under the reign of God our Father and not the world. Together, we can live lives that defy the challenges and cruelties of that world outside. Let us stand as we are able and affirm what we believe <clears throat> using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the crime of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious silent. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. That, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our, our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light perpetual shine upon them. May we, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. 
May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pay, pray for Jim, Jean, Betty Jean, Dolores, the Holleran family, Christopher, BJ, for peace in the Middle East, those suffering from COVID and their families, those for whom the daughters of the king pray. We also pray for Jeannie, Griff, Buddy, Eru, Debbie, Adeline, Eddie, Bill, and BT. We give thanks for the fathers among us. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against, against you, and in soft word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. several birthdays to celebrate today and I see two birthday folks right here so Curtis if you could come up and Christine you could come up and we will it's wonderful to have people in person <laughs> our prayers come on yay come on <laughs> try come on Curtis here we go we go this side wonderful let us pray O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And happy birthday. Happy birthday, yeah. yeah. And included in that, and I forgot to give you my whole list, are also Philip and Griff. They have birthdays this week as well. Um, additionally, we have two couples that have anniversaries, Kevin and Sarah, Dean and Stacy. So let us pray for them. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may continue to love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience and wisdom and true godliness, that their homes may continue to be havens of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue to pray for those who are dear to us, but who are absent from us at this time because of the effects of the pandemic. So let us pray for them. 
O God, whose fatherly care reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth, we humbly beseech you graciously to behold and bless those whom we love now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body, and grant that both they and we, drawing nearer to you, may be bound together by your love in the communion of your Holy Spirit and in the fellowship of your saints, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from <coughs> evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we, his resurrection. we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Put all, in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Mark and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
us pray. Eternal God, God Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Say a little voice for us. Good morning. Good morning. 